All right, thank you everybody for coming to this session. My name is Anthony Anter. The session is Modernizing Mainframe Application Development with Git. Um, if this is the wrong session, then now is your chance to leave with no repercussions. If, if, if this is the right session and you attempt to leave in the middle, I'm going to make fun of you, just so we're all clear at the very beginning. Okay, so modernize your mainframe applications, modernize your mainframe application development with Git. <clears throat> so who am I? I'm not just a super handsome face that BMC decided to throw up here in front of everyone. Uh, my name's Anthony Anter. I'm a DevOps architect and evangelist at BMC. And what I do is I speak to organizations, companies, people about the art of the possible. So from 2014 until 2021, I worked for a major US credit card company. I'll let you guys go to my LinkedIn profile if you want to know who that is, but up here we'll just keep it vague and say a major U.S. credit card company. Um, I was a director of engineering for CICD. As such, we created a set of pipelines for this company on the distributed side, end-to-end -end DevOps pipelines, using a combination of Jenkins and ARA, and a bunch of different testing frameworks and testing tools, including uh, MicroFocus's uh, Load Runner and a few other things like that, uh, uh, Sonar Cube, et cetera. We used all those to create an end-to-end -end set of DevOps pipelines, through which about 90 plus percent of the company on the distributed side was using those pipelines to do their DevOps and their CI CD. From there, the company noticed that there was a, a two-speed IT situation going on. The distributed teams could push changes depending on the maturity of the team in two sprints, maybe three sprints, four sprints, depending upon the size of the changes. But any cross-functional projects that had to go on that included the mainframe, the mainframe was taking months, months to roll these changes out. So as such, the company came to me and said, can we do anything about this on the mainframe side? Can we go, can we push DevOps on the mainframe? Now, at the time, this was pretty daunting to me because, I, number one, I was not a mainframe guy. I was not someone who had done any work on the mainframe. I was not a mainframe developer. If I had to classify myself as anything, it would be more like a full-stack Java engineer. So at the time, I said, I don't know but let's try. And so I went into it with the idea of taking the mainframe and just treating it as another platform, as just another target for deploying code changes. And my question to the mainframe teams and to mainframe technology in general was why? Why not? Why can't we do this? Give me a technical reason why you can't automate your deployments, you can't automate your source code management, you can't automate all of those things that today are manual tasks, why can't you put those, put an orchestrator on top of that and have it move tasks from one, move loads, excuse me, from one task to the next? So from 2018 to 2020, I worked on creating with, excuse me, I worked on creating a platform that would allow for DevOps on the mainframe basically automating all those tasks. Partnered with BMC CompuWare at the time to bring in their suite of tools in order to have you know, a modern agile based uh, source code management system. Put that on top of the existing pipelines that we had already created for the distributed side to handle those orchestration loads and handle things like change management, scanning, et cetera. And then bring a modern developer experience to mainframe development through an IDE. From, two, sorry, from 2018 to 2020, I worked on that, and we got that up and running. And once we piloted that with a team and moved, rolled that out, we then moved the rest of the company off of their legacy platform, off the traditional legacy platform they were on, onto this new DevOps-enabled platform. The scope of that was 
somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 applications, 3,500 engineers, uh, I don't know, somewhere like 800 million lines of code. I, I lost count at some point <laughs> when we were going through this. But we did this, and we did this not including the pilot time in about a year. We moved the majority of those applications in maybe a couple of days over a year it took us. So when I left, I joined BMC in order to evangelize the art of the possible so that I can go to organizations and talk to them about, first off, the project that I had done and accomplished, and secondly, to work with them as a DevOps expert in showing them what could be done on the mainframe. What is the art of the possible on the mainframe, right? And I, this is what I love, this is what I live. So I read about DevOps, I talk about DevOps, I love DevOps, and to me, DevOps is a platform agnostic. It doesn't matter what technology you're talking about or what platform you're talking about. DevOps is something that transcends all that without getting too metaphysical on you. So that brings us to the main source of this topic, Git. So if you'd have gone back three or four years and you would have said, you know what, I'm going to move all my COBOL source code, I'm going to move all my assembler, I'm going to move all my PL1, I'm going to move all my JCLs and copybooks and everything onto a Git repo, people probably would have looked at you like you were crazy. If you say that today, depending on who you're talking to, they might look at you like you're crazy. So you have to ask yourself, why Git and why now? Why is the push for moving to Git? Why now? So just to take a step back, Git was created in 2005 by Linus Torvalds, the same guy who created Linux. And he gets a ton of credit for creating Linux. He does not get, in my opinion, the credit he deserves for creating Git. He developed Git because he didn't like the way Subversion and the other source code management tools allowed him and his team to work in parallel. He didn't like how it operated. So he invented Git so that every single developer would have their own environment to do their work. They could pull all the source code down and have their own, I'll call it a sandbox, but I think that term gets overused today. They could have their own sandbox to develop in. And then once they were done, once they had made all their changes, they could then merge those changes back into the, to a main branch for deployment. So today, Git is probably a standard. Git is, if you go to any organization, anywhere, they probably have some form of Git running on the distributed side. 90%, I think, is their market share. Git. Now, you can then break Git down into GitHub versus GitLab versus Bitbucket versus Git Kraken versus 100 other Git things. Those have different varying levels of market share. But Git in and of itself, every organization is running some kind of Git instance for doing their development. Git provides, in my estimation, and I would, I would argue almost anyone's estimation, probably at this moment the best developer experience for doing source code management, for handling parallel development within teams, for allowing teams to share code, whether you're out, you know, in, whether you're going open source, inner sourcing, would, which I would term as open sourcing within an organization, just general development, right? Git provides a superior capability experience for collaboration, for parallel development, ease of use, setup, etc. That's why it's become so widely adopted throughout the industry. Now, Agile teams today have built their SDLCs around Git and how it operates. Git flow, GitHub flow, how all those capabilities, how all those methodologies work is how companies are organizing their SDLC. Now, how does that help 
on the mainframe side. That's all great distributed. How does that help on the mainframe side? Couple things. Number one, we've already established as a source code management system, Git is top notch. It's best in class. Number two, your, now your base of individuals who know how your systems work has just expanded to almost everyone. One of the issues, and I'm gonna to get to this a little bit later on in my discussion, but it's part of the why get, why now. One of the issues is today your SMEs, your, your lead developers, the guys who know your mainframe systems best of all, are looking to retire. A lot of them are one year, two years, five years, eight years from retirement. Your mainframe's not going anywhere. There might be people in here who are saying, well, we're getting off the mainframe. You're probably not getting off of it in five years, if you're getting off of it at all. Your mainframe is still your system of record. When I pull up this phone and I go to make a transaction at a bank, I'm gonna deposit some money, or I'm gonna pay somebody, I guarantee you, you're going through a mainframe. Your money, your records are stored on a mainframe. The information is on a mainframe. I can do as much as I want on the mobile phone, but if the system of record for all that information is a mainframe, the mainframe has to operate at the same speed. If all of your SMEs, all of your lead developers, your most experienced people are leaving, you have to replace them with somebody. Today, all the kids in college are learning Git. When you go to engineering school, the first thing you get is a GitHub account. Then you're probably pulling down VS Code or Eclipse or JetBrains or whatever IDE floats your boat, most likely VS Code. That's what they're learning. If you're going to get those guys and girls, those people, and move them onto the platform and make the platform viable again. Not viable again, it's viable today. Make it viable, make it vibrant, bring in new blood. You're gonna have to give them the systems, the tools, the capabilities that they want. What they want is Git. That's why it's 90 plus percent adopted throughout the industry. Organizations are also looking to consolidate their code onto a single platform. They don't wanna have mainframe COBOL code which is running the core applications of the bank or the insurance company or the municipality or the utility. They don't want those on this system, but then all my mobile code and my Go and my Java and all that is on this system, right? They want it on a single system. They want it together. They can back it up easier. They can secure it easier. Security doesn't want to have to manage breaches in two places. They want to manage breaches in one places. Consolidating into a single choice, that choice will be Git, and it's very easy to secure and manage that way. A lot of teams today, because of the retirements, they're, they're forming what we call cross-functional teams. So on a single team that handles payments, You'll have guys that are doing front-end, mobile, cloud, web, guys that are doing COBOL, back-end, system of record work. Sometimes they're the same guy. Sometimes it's two different people. But either way, they want their code base in a single place. All these things together are coming together to say, why Git, why now, right? That's why it's moving to Git, why now? is because now is the time. This is the time, you're at that, you're at that uh, confluence of everything coming together and migrating off of the older systems. So, if we're gonna talk about the mainframe platform, right, we have to talk about, well, let me back up a step. I hate the term modernizing the mainframe. I hate it. The mainframe is modern. If you look at the capabilities in the Z16, the Z16 has just as much functionality as any platform out there. What needs to be modernized is app development. 
What needs to be modernized are the applications running on the platform, right? If I'm looking in a data center, I'm going to challenge you that you would be able to tell me which one of those server racks is running your cloud and which one is running your ZOS. Maybe if it has that Z16 logo on the front, that might tip you off. But otherwise, if I take that off, you're not going to be able to tell. So if you're going to modernize those application development, if you're going to modernize application development, you have to modernize the capabilities and the tooling that those application developers have. So 96% of organization, they report mainframe development challenges. The biggest challenge is that the tools and the, the things on the mainframe aren't modern. They don't give them the, the, the capabilities to do what they need to do. Modern mainframe developers need to, need to enhance the developer experience. And that's where Git comes into the picture, right? You have modern mainframe development tools today. BMC offers a whole suite of them. But if you're going to take that to the next level, modernizing those with a Git interface and using Git for your source code management, that's the way that you need that's the direction that you need to go, and that's the direction that organizations are looking to go as they bring in new blood. So who should care, right? Who should care if you're going to go back to your organization and you're going to say, why should I care about Git on the mainframe? What are those personas that you should be looking at? Number one is your developer especially that new developer. He doesn't want to look at green screens. He doesn't want to have to wait for someone else to check their changes in in order for him to check that module out and do it. He wants to work in a parallel, agile environment that allows him to do his work and then worry about the merge at the end, not at the beginning. Your development manager. They're going to want more parallel development capabilities. They're going to want more people to deliver more story points in a, in a, inside of a sprint than they can today. So your development manager is going to want that enhanced developer experience because a happy developer is a productive developer. Security. We already went through this a little bit. But security wants to see... Security wants to have all of the source code in a single, easy-to-secure spot. They don't want to have to worry about two different platforms, two different things. Last, legal. One of the cool things about Git, on top of everything that we've just described, very easy auditability. Very easy to track who did what, when did they do it, if they leave good comments, why did they do it, where did they do it? And, oh, I don't want that. I'm now going to roll that back. I'm going to revert that source back to a certain point in time. Compare, contrast. All of these personas have a stake in why you would want to move your system to Git and why you would want to go down this path. So what's the way forward? Right? I have a legacy system. I have an older system. What's the way forward? How do I get to that next jump? How do I get to that next, next piece of modernization for application development? I don't think that any of us would want to go down or stick with the legacy systems that we have today. Right? The reason we're behind, the reason we have so much technical debt it's because of these legacy systems and legacy processes. Decades of customizations. One team is really good at it. The next team's not. There's no standardization across any of it. Expensive licensing. So I think we've eliminated that. So what do I do? Do I move? 100% to Git? Do I move all my source, all my capabilities, all my teams, everything goes to Git now? I move to Git 100%. 
Will this fit every application? That's an open question if anybody wants to answer it. Will, this, will every single application, is this the right move for every single application, every single code base, every single developer at your organization? No. There is no one size fits all, even for something as cool as Git. One size does not fit everything. You can talk about moving everything to Git. Maybe that's the right move for you. I'm not saying it isn't, but I'm also not saying it is. You shouldn't have to move everything to Git in one giant Big Bang approach. So what we offer at BMC is an interface with Git that provides you flexibility and capability, but doesn't necessarily mean that you have to move every single thing that you want to Git. I'll get into that in a second. So that was a little bit of a teaser. But how does Git work with ISPW on the mainframe? How does Git work on the mainframe? So Git development works exactly the same way regardless of what system you're using. Regard, excuse me, let me back up. Git development works regardless of whether, well, Git works the same regardless of whether you're doing distributed development or you're doing mainframe development. A developer branches their code off of a, branches the code off of a repo, off of a feature branch, creates a feature branch. They do their work. They build it. They test it. When they're done, they do a pull request and check those, so, those changes back into a source code management system. From there, there's probably a peer review of some kind set up with a lead. Once those changes are good, they're merged into the main branch and they're set. At that point, that's when the system takes over. And there's a webhook CLI that we built that basically syncs your changes with the mainframe. What it allows you to do is then it allows you to build and deploy your changes via ISPW on the mainframe. So now you can start promoting your changes up the path from one section to the next on the mainframe via any of your typical orchestrators. So you're using the best of class source code management system with a best in class deployment, build and deployment system on the mainframe. So those changes are automatically synced. And it's not something that the developer has to manually do themselves. This is handled under the hood, obfuscated from the, from the day to day. Those changes are automatically sunk with the mainframe, and then you can start your promotion capabilities through your pathway. Feature, staging, production, that's a simple example, but you get the point. Because ISPW is built with what we call our open borders policy, which means everything you need to do is exposed via API, you can hook this to any of your standard orchestrators that you want. Jenkins, GitLab, uh, GitLab CI pipelines, GitHub Actions, Urban Code, whatever you feel like. You can basically hook those together, and now you can create a pipeline that allows you to push your changes down that pathway, keep promoting them from level to level, deploy them from level to level until you get into production. At that point, since you're reusing those same pipelines that you do with your distributed side, you can now start coordinating releases between your distributed and your mainframe. So if you have a cross-functional system that has changes in both, you can now coordinate those via uh, an Uber pipeline that calls both or however you want to do that. Did you have a question in the back? Sorry, I saw you raise your hand. I saw, okay. You looked like, I don't, you looked like you're scratching your face or you had a question. I wasn't sure which one, so... Um, so this is how Git works with the mainframe. But let's say I don't want to move all into the mainframe because we've already established one size does not fit all. Oh. 
There we go. Oops, sorry. Let me go back one. With Git development, we have what we would call our hybrid approach. And what that hybrid approach means is this. You can have teams that are going and using Git for their Git pipeline. So let's say application A. Application A wants to use Git. Or excuse me, application A wants to do standard mainframe development. Maybe they're a maintenance application. They only push changes, security updates a couple times a year, right? Maybe they don't want to make the transition to Git. Maybe the transition to Git doesn't fit that application. They can stay on the mainframe. They can continue to push their changes and work on the mainframe using a standard development pipeline to do that. But application B, they want to get to daily, weekly production pushes. They want to really ramp up their parallel development. They want to use all the capabilities in Git, and they're a more mature, more modern application. They can go on Git. And through ISPW, both of those applications can exist using the same instance. You can have some applications that are working strictly on the mainframe that are doing their development as they are today. And then you can have other applications who are adopting the Git pathway. And they can use Git for their development. Say that, hey, Spencer. So, so it makes it difficult gonna... to decide where that program resides. You have a program that could be on Git, mm -hmm. could be in Endeavor or wherever else, Librarian or something. How do you deal with not knowing where the program is? So the example I'm giving is specific to ISPW, but at that point, you basically strategically application to application decide whether this application should continue to use ISPW and use ISPW for their builds and deploys because that fits them best or strategically go to Git, right? So it's not that one's going to be on librarian, one's going to be on Endeavor, one's going to be on ISPW, and one's going to be on Git. When you make the change, then at that point, you're deciding within ISPW, I have 20 applications. Ten of them they fit Git perfectly. The other 10, they either don't fit Git or those application teams just don't want to do it. And what it does is it gives them the choice while still giving you as an organization the capability to lay your foundation over top. So one of the things that when if you're going to move to Git, you also have to think about how do you get your source code off of the mainframe, off of your, off of your system, onto, onto Git, onto a modern DevOps-enabled platform. So BMC offers a set of migration services that help you, help you migrate your systems off of your pla off of your legacy platform onto a brand new DevOps enabled platform that then gives you the capabilities. And we break it into a three step process. Step one is migrate off of your legacy source code management system. Migrate off of your existing system with the technical debt, with all of the all the thirty years of thirty years of, of platforming that you've done around it to get it to work how you want, migrate off of that onto a new, onto the newer SCM. Migrate, migrate off of that onto ISPW. And make sure that you set this up and you're used to parallel development, agility. Get your people, process, and culture set. Get it onto that new platform and start laying the groundwork for your future integrations. Step two is start integrating into, start creating your pipelines. Start creating your, start creating your automated DevOps pipelines. Start looking at your source code, excuse me, start looking at your code scanning. 
Start putting all your pieces together for your pipeline to automate that DevOps journey down the pipe. The last piece is step three. You Now that you're on your new platform, you've got your pipeline set up, you've got your SDLC set up through those pipelines, now you can start looking at moving on to Git. Start taking those, start strategically taking those applications where it makes sense and start moving them on to Git and optimize them across various platforms. Each one of those pieces, each one of those steps, some of it can be done in parallel, some of it needs to be done step by step. But if you, we've, seen, we've seen through our history that going through each one of those steps sets a pathway to success so that you're not just jumping off a cliff, moving on to a new platform. You have that, you have that step-by-step approach to change the culture and the processes at your organization. And BMC can help you with that. So I'm not sure where I'm at in the timing. I know this was only 30 minutes. We're good? Okay. Oh, I'm done? Yeah. Okay. Well, next steps, if you want to learn more about this or go into some research, there's a great Get for the Mainframe ebook that highlights a lot of what I talked about here. As well as we have an education portfolio for those that um, want to learn more about this or want to get some training on uh, DevOps on the mainframe as well as agility. There we go. And the last piece is my contact information. All these decks will be available at the end of the conference. So if you want to, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to deep dive. I only had 30 minutes. Typically, I do this with a demo, with a live, live action demo. But in 30 minutes, I, I couldn't get to both. So thank you very much.